Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Recently I've been speedrunning the Super Mario World credits warp, and in this video I want to try and shine some light onto the technical inner workings of the glitch. I'll explain how all of the arcane memory manipulation culminates into a warp to the credits from the very first level of the game. To the right of the gameplay footage, I've rendered out a view of the memory that the Super Nintendo's processor has access to. Each pixel is a single byte of memory. Each byte can have a value between 0 and 255, with 0 being black and 255 being white. The top area contains the 8 kilobytes of RAM that are the most easily accessible, and the bottom half contains the 32 kilobytes of ROM that the processor is currently running code from. The blue area in the middle contains some special memory addresses that are used for special features of the Super Nintendo, though it mostly consists of an unused portion of the memory space called Open Bus. As gameplay proceeds, you can see that some RAM addresses change, although most of them stay the same. The trigger for the credits warp is the item swap glitch, so we'll pause at the frame of the glitch. Now we can visually follow the step-by-step -step path that the processor takes through ROM as it performs the computations necessary to run the game. The red arrow shows you where the processor is reading its instructions from. Notice that it normally stays within the ROM part of memory, executing instructions from the game cartridge. The processor occasionally jumps between ROM banks, switching out the entire 32 kilobytes of code for a different set of code also from ROM. However, the same two kilobytes of RAM are always accessible. The green arrow shows you what memory locations are being written to and read from during each processor instruction. The writes mostly occur within RAM, though some of the reads can occur from the ROM. Here, the processor has reached the part of code responsible for handling Yoshi's tongue. On this frame, he's eating a charge and chuck, which is normally impossible, and because of that, the programmers didn't define what's supposed to happen. Instead of jumping to a bit of code that handles the case, it jumps here, in the middle of the blue area. This area of memory is what I previously called Open Bus, and this is where things get off the rails. In Open Bus, whatever byte was last read from or written to RAM determines the next processor instruction. In this case, the last byte that was read corresponds to an ORA instruction and the processor reads two bytes from address 0a and 0b, way up here. These bytes contain the horizontal and vertical screen that Yoshi is located within. Each level is divided up into 256 by 256 pixel screens, and in this case Yoshi is in the seventh horizontal screen and first vertical screen. This causes the next instruction to be another ORA instruction that starts by reading from address 17. This address has bits that are 0 or 1, depending on whether or not the A, X, L, or R buttons are being pressed on the controller. Since I was holding R, L, and X during this frame, the value is 70. This makes the processor read from address E4. Address E4 is the last seen X coordinate of the sprite in sprite slot 0. When I hit this Koopa out of its shell, it spawned into sprite slot 0, slid to a stop here, and then was despawned as I left it behind. It stopped with an X coordinate of hexadecimal FC within screen 1. When a value FC is interpreted by the processor, it's a jump to subroutine instruction, or JSR, and it's our ticket out of open bus. This jump instruction looks at addresses 1A05 and 1A06 to determine where to jump to. These RAM addresses are responsible for keeping track of which coins and power up blocks you've collected. By duplicating this Yoshi block and also hitting the original block, it sets the lower two bits of address 1A06 for a value of 3. Address 1A05 has a value of 0 since there are no blocks or coins being tracked by that byte. This means that the processor will jump to address 300. Normally the processor doesn't really execute instructions from RAM, only ROM, and this is where we start to have a lot more control over what the processor does. Address 300 is in the middle of a section of RAM that's responsible for drawing sprite graphics on screen. Specifically, address 300 was set when I turned around while holding a red shell. It was the on-screen x-coordinate of the graphic of Mario facing the screen while holding something, which had a value of 80. The byte after that is F0, which is the y-coordinate of that graphic. That y-coordinate is off-screen, which is how the game prevents the graphic from being drawn after Mario is no longer in that pose. 80F0 is another type of jump instruction called a branch, which jumps a short distance here to RAM address 2F2. This address is in the same graphics region and was most recently used to draw this white splat graphic on screen. Because the white splat had an on-screen x-coordinate of 18, the processor looks at address 1829 to see where it should jump to next. 
Address 1829 was last set by the Y velocities of these Yoshi egg fragments. By despawning the top right fragment early with a very precise camera control, 1829 and 182A contain the velocity values 42 and 1A. Since the processor was looking for these values to determine where to jump, it now jumps to address 421A. 421A is in the blue region, but it isn't open bus. It's the joypad auto read registers. It contains a bunch of bits, each bit corresponding to a different button on the four controllers that are plugged in via multitaps. Because of the buttons that I have held down on the extra controllers, the processor instruction at address 421A is another jump to subroutine instruction, which temporarily jumps back into the game's code and ROM at address A048. This code does some arithmetic with Mario's X coordinate and writes it to address 0F here. This value is important for later, and it means that Mario has to be at this specific X coordinate for the glitch to work. Then it returns processor instruction back to from where it was called to the joypad auto read registers at address 421D. Address 421D contains another branch instruction, which moves processor execution back into the ROM at address ECA0. This code pulls some values off the stack, which was necessary because of the original jump from open bus to RAM. It then goes on to read address 0F, which we set based on Mario's X coordinate, and uses it to set the value of address 100. This right here is what the whole setup was trying to achieve. Address 100 stores the current game mode. Depending on the value contained at this address, the game will play the title screen, overworld, normal gameplay, or in this case, the credits. If Mario's X coordinate was off by even a single pixel, the game mode would not be changed to credits mode, but instead would most likely crash the game due to an invalid game mode. After this, the processor goes on to eventually return back to the power-up eating code and resumes normal operation in ROM. Starting with the next frame, the game is in credits mode, and our goal has been achieved. It took me quite a bit of research to figure out how to manipulate all these RAM values in just the right way to cause this arcane chain of events. But the end result is well worth it culminating in one of the most notorious glitches in all of speedrunning. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.